let's set up embroidering the pocket or creating the pocket inside in the hoop for the um, internal lining of the busy box. This is just going to be a zipper pocket applied to the lining complete so as that um, you can actually have an accessory pocket either side of the box once it's opened up and forms its tray. So let's do our placement line for the outside shape of the panel and then we're going to do placement lines for our zip application. This is quite a simple technique and it gives you a beautifully finished zip. I'm using a 6x10 hoop so it will give us an 8 inch zip finished. Pocket depth is about 4 inches. We're just going to washi tape our zip onto our placement lines and secure the zip puller. The foot of the machine is running along the top of the zip on the left hand side of the, of the zip tape. And on the right hand side the machine foot will be free to sit inside the zip tape. The zip tape needs to be secure to the stabilizer otherwise it will be a little bit full when the, gut, when the project is finished. So we've stitched the, t the zip to the stabilizer. Remove our washi tape. And then we want to place the first piece of lining onto the, and we want to place a quarter of an inch past the left stitching um, of the zip, the actual zip itself. And just fold that under, because we don't want it caught into the mechanism when we're putting the hoop back into the machine. And we're going to apply fabric one, which is the larger piece, against the same line of stitching. So it's quarter of an inch past the zip stitching line. Just tuck that into place there. I'm just gonna pin through all layers, just moving that off the table so as it's free. And that will just hold that together. And we're going to put that into the machine and stitch through all those layers to secure both the back lining of the pocket and the front of this panel. Let's just take our washi tape off. Don't know why I'm using it again, because it doesn't work. When you put washi tape onto tear away, the fluff of the tear away just stops the washi tape from working. So um, I try to be a little bit more resourceful. Right, so let's fold that down and I'm going to pin that into place along the edge. I don't generally pin very much at all, but I'm going to pin and I've put a little bit of a curve, we've got a little bit of a curve in our pins because we are, they get um, curves in them when you put them around the hoop, so a little bit of a curve definitely helps when you're trying to put a pin into a hoop. Just finger press that seam flat. Then we're going to that's the next piece going on there, but let's do the back first. We're going to apply our second piece of pocket lining. So again, up to the top, top of the zip, quarter inch past the um, stitching on the zip. Catch in all four corners. Make sure they are pressed down. And then we're going to place the fabric two, which is the fabric above the zip. Again, quarter inch past the stitching of the zip to the zip tape to the stabilizer. I'm just catching that fabric with a piece of washi tape so as it's on the fabric and on the hoop. Just, it just makes it easier. And then we're going to put this back into the machine and stitch. Our, our seam now, 
just watch the seam because we our foot's running on the teeth of the machine so we have actually probably increased our foot height by one click and we need to do a few jobs here now take our washi tape off take our pins out and we're going to, to actually stitch our pocket bag so that's going to be stitched through the two pieces of lining on the back of the hoop and through our stabilizer which will the, the stabilizer being a tear away we will be able to pull off this row of stitching so this is our pocket bag so really everything is done for you in this process So we need to make sure that our zip puller is actually up into our work. I try and pull it up into the first third of our pocket. Trim any excess zip tape off. And then we just sort of finger press that piece of fabric out on the angle. Do the same with this one here. Probably should have trimmed my zip tape back a bit more. Didn't do that. Put that so it's nice and secure and we're going to do two sections which they're going to be a parallel lines to this original row of stitching from the perimeter stitching to just to where the other line stops now what that's going to be doing it's going to create a fold or a lap or a pleat whichever you wish to call it over the zip so it hides the zip we would call this a lapped zip if you are actually going to be in dressmaking terms so let's just take that out fold that back and then let's see our zips there just finger press a crease along the edge because we're going to top stitch along that top of the zip and we want it to have a nice straight line and we make sure our, we know where our zip puller is so we're going to keep that low first just make sure that that zip pull is low and we're going to stitch half of the top stitching now it's a triple stitch so when it when it stops it will be very very hard to see where it starts again and you'll see what i mean when we stop here so it stops and it does a trim and we want shift that stopper up that's why we put the stop in so as that stop so as you remember to actually pull that zip up and then we're going to come across and finish and that's our zip pocket complete other than so those seams at the end of that zip have been stitched to the outside perimeter they're nice and secure and apart from trimming up and taking our stabilizer off we're done so remove our pins that have secured our stabilizer to our hoop Take as much washi tape off as you can. Just live, trim that up at the bottom of the plastic pocket bag. I just trim my corners of my pocket bag, probably purely for habit there's no real reason although curved corners do last longer in both garments and handbags because things don't fall to things then fall to the center of the pocket rather than sticking into a corner and we're going to trim up our seam allowances to half an inch i'm using the perimeter stitching line that we put in at the very very first step So it's half inch all the way around. You'll see that I've done that that seam in two sections because the zip puller um, stops you from placing your ruler flat. There we go. So let's get rid of that washi tape.
And let's just pull our stabilizer away. You can see that I've got some zip tape, um, the, the zip tape at the end, which I didn't trim back. You could trim that now if you wanted to. As long as it's not in the seam, it doesn't really matter. Okay, there's our pocket. All ready to go into our project. One more thing to do. For the zip to actually work, you need to, t to rip out the tear away. And sometimes it comes out easily and sometimes it doesn't. One side it came off in a nice long, long piece, which was excellent. And the other side has just left me with bits. Right, we are done. Ready to put it into our project, which is the busy box.